And now that Anakin Skywalker has been named Darth Vader, his first assignment is to go back to the Jedi Temple and slaughter any of the remaining Jedi there. And now we get to what I like to call the best part of this movie. The time has come, so the Emperor orders orders the Stormtrooper to execute Order 66. Order 66 is basically waste all of the Jedi. This biker scout and this stormtrooper are about to sneak up on Yoda and kill him, but he chops their heads off with his little lightsaber. Hmm. Oh well, time for a really cute scene. Chewbacca gives Yoda a piggyback. Whee! Again, again you must do! Oh yes, of course this cute little scene is interrupted by another reason this film is PG-13 rated. Wet yourself in sheer terror, little boy! So all Ubaduba can do is watch helplessly as everything goes wrong. Senator Organa returns to, returns to the platform to find that he's been betrayed by a bunch of stormtroopers. And so we must cut to another reason why this film is PG-13 rated. As we see this youngling child try to fend off a bunch of stormtroopers, but... He's just no match. Oh well, time to say goodbye to Chewbacca here. I thought you said miss them, do not, and no, never mind. So Yoda takes off in his little E.T. spacecraft and heads elsewhere. Meanwhile, Anakin has returned to Ubaduba's apartment. And we get a little fun from the droids, R2 and 3PO, just standing in the background doing practically nothing. Thanks a lot. Anakin basically lays it all out for Ubaduba that the Jedi have betrayed the Chancellor, even when he saw them firsthand try to kill him. Anakin says that his loyalties lie with the Senate, the Chancellor, and of course Ubaduba. Outside of that, he has no idea what else to do, other than the fact that he has been given orders to proceed to Mustafa, Mustafa. Because I like 3PO so much, I thought I'd just show this scene. So do I, watching this movie. That makes two of us. So, the familiar ship of the Tantive IV from the first Star Wars film makes an appearance, finally. And they've managed to rescue both Obi-Wan and Yoda from the ambush. Just watch. We're getting there. In your own time. Oh, there they are. Always wondered why Yoda doesn't exactly track footprints all over this nice, pristine-looking ship. Now, welcome to paradise. This is the Mustafa system. The Mustafa system, of course, is a beautiful volcanic world where absolutely all the fun things go on, like a bunch of droids cleaning out lava pits. How very exciting. Meanwhile, inside... The Emperor contacts the Viceroy of the Trade Federation, saying that when my new apprentice, Darth Vader, arrives, he will take care of you. The Viceroy, Viceroy Newt Gingrich, excuse me, Gunray, being incredibly stupid, doesn't understand what any of this means. So Anakin finally arrives on Mustafa. Oh, it's always stay with the ship. R2 never gets to do anything fun. So now it's time for Darth Vader to show up and... Have you now? And well, now comes my second favorite part of this film. 
Meanwhile, a special session of Congress has been called, and, of course, the Emperor lays out his plans to hunt down and kill all the remaining Jedi for betraying the Senate so casually. So it's time to kill a whole bunch of idiots in the Trade Federation and some useless battle droids. But, of course, a good scene is constantly interrupted by a terrible scene with the special Senate of Congress! Oh, that's good. No. Oh, you're such a wiener. And Darth Vader shows off his awesome yellow eyes to let us know that he's evil now. And meanwhile, back at the boring as hell Senate hearing, <clears throat> the Emperor announces that the Republic will be reorganized into the First Galactic Empire. Yes, and everybody is very happy with this, of course. Remember, all of this thanks to Jar Jar. I will spare you a fairly controversial political rant, but... <clears throat> but that line was stupid in so many levels, other than to say it was anti-Bush, or taken that way. Oh, well, at least Anakin, excuse me, Darth Vader, has finally killed Newt Gingrich, I mean Gunray, and finally put an end to these stupid battle droids. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan and Yoda are snooping around in the Jedi Library to find out what was going on in the files, if, if their security cameras caught anyone killing those younglings. Not like any of us care, of course. So Obi-Wan goes into the security recordings and discovers that it was Anakin, his own apprentice, killing all the younglings. It can't be. It can't be. Will you please watch your language, Obi-Wan? You're in a PG-13 rated film. Neither can I. Yoda basically comes up with some indecisive nonsense about how Anakin has been twisted by the dark side. No, there was nothing there to twist. He was already evil from the word go. He just didn't know it until the Emperor softened him up to the concept. And he says that he's been consumed by Darth Vader. Wrong. Actually, Anakin has been doing what he's always been doing, and doing best, killing children. So now it's time to uh, so now it's time to interrogate Ubaduba and her own digs. Of course, Ubaduba lies to Obi Wan, saying that she doesn't know where he is, she doesn't know where he went. But you can't bullshit a Jedi. You just can't. Oh man, now I find myself saying can't. You're wrong. You're wrong. How can you even say that? Who wrote this dialogue for you? Oh, wait, I know who it was. Obi-Wan tells Ubaduba everything, the truth of everything that's happened. But, of course, being a complete brainless brick that she is, she still refuses to believe it. Ubaduba decides that she's going to go to the Mustafar system herself. And she does have C-3PO to look after him, so... And to look after her, so... She's screwed. I mean, she is really screwed. But 3PO, confident in his abilities to pilot a ship, is quite impressed that he can actually fly a plane. Good for him. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan stows away on board the ship without Ubaduba or 3PO even knowing. Darth Vader contacts the Emperor from his very, in, in his very spatial office. So now that the war is over and all of that stuff, he's basically just going to stick around on Mustafar until further orders are received. But Vader does happen to notice Ubaduba's ship coming in. 3PO manages to land the ship safely on the platform, 
It's good. It's really good to know that 3PO can do something without screwing it up. Now it's time for Uba Duba, since she's embraced Darth Vader in her arms, to hyperventilate about everything that he's done. You've killed younglings! You, 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 you've done bad things! You've got to settle down, Uba Duba. It's for your own good, and for your own protection. She lets it slip that Obi-Wan knows all about their marriage, the fact that she's pregnant, everything. Uba Duba just basically lays it all on the line while Anakin, excuse me, Darth Vader, I should say, gives it a nice little grin and says, mm, eh, whatever. But then again, Anakin's speech goes into full creep-out mode when he basically lets it slip that I've become more powerful than the Chancellor. I could even overthrow him if I wanted to. And we could rule the galaxy and make things the way we want them to be. Doesn't that sound nice? So yes, his full creep factor is actually moved up to the 11, to 11 on the dial. I can't believe what I'm hearing, she says. Can't believe what you're hearing! Oh, you seem to take it just fine in the last film after Anakin killed children. So whatever happened to be human is to be angry, you walking plot convenience. I don't know you anymore. <laughs> it's all because of Obi-Wan and you're going down a path I just can't follow. <laughs> but once he sees Anakin, then, but once he sees Obi-Wan, it's full flip-out mode. Real nice, Obi-Wan. You stow away on board her ship just to have him do that. Are all of you stupid? No. Yes, so he force chokes Uba Duba, his only motivation for doing exactly what he's doing. The only reason he's even here right now, the only reason he killed all the Separatist leaders, and also destroyed the battle droids, was so that she can, so that he could save her goddamn life. Don't make me kill you? Where did that come from? This conversation is so random and pointless, it could have gone like this. I brought freedom and order to my new empire. Your new empire? Don't make me kill you. Don't make me kill you. Coat hangers. John Jenga Jingleheimer Schmidt. His name is my name, too. Did you ever wonder how they get the cranberries into a sauce? And now it's time for some lightsaber fighting. Except this one looks awful. It looks so obviously choreographed like they're dancing.